I don't have to pay attention. Here's the flippy one. Well, I don't know. No, your thing is different than mine. It was usually like up in here. Hmm. Mm, no. It was like a setting. Well, we'll have to figure it out later. We'll have to do a, t a test. We'll have to do like test, testing, testing type of thing. No, you can go do a Google what? and ask. Dad. Hello, people. I'm PC retarded. How you? How's everyone doing? Let us know if you can hear us. We got the funky mic again. <laughs> well, it's like your, it's like your. Do you feel official? Yeah, it's like a pro, pro mic or something like that. You know, do, you feel, like, do you feel official? I'd like to welcome everybody out there in Radio Land. You know, like, they have some kind of different kind of voice or something. <laughs> Is that your official mic? have your radio voice. Is that your official microphone voice? I don't know. I don't think I have one. <laughs> it always seems like when you have one of those things, you have to say, oh, 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 do you know? In the dead light. <laughs> you know, something like that. Okay. All righty. Morning. Taylor says morning. Good morning. Taylor, where morning. are you at? Yeah, you must be somewhere else on the planet. It is definitely not morning where we Loud are. Loud and clear. All right. Hello. Awesome. Good to see you all. Boulder, Boulder, Utah. Boulder, Utah. Nice. So you are also experiencing the nice freezing chill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about the temperature. <laughs> Tegan posted out there, I guess, the, you know, how cold is it in your place? Because mm -hmm. here we did go. We had like fall was like a day and a half or something. Yeah. Like two days. And we just like went right into early winter. Uh, that's okay. We need the water. It's true. We do. So, but. I mean, it's still. Maryland, Maryland, I guess. Hello, from Maryland. Hello, Roberta. <clears throat> Let's see. Do you have any exciting news this week? You got a haircut. That's exciting. I did. Got a haircut this morning. Yeah. Looking yeah. slick. Yeah. Your wedge is pretty, pretty bushy. Mm. Looking good. It's uh, it's kind of nice uh, when you you know you go to the same barber. They kind of you don't even have to say anything. You just kind of sit down. They start. <laughs> and they uh, he checks my ears for ear hair. You know, Ooh. cuts those out. He, I don't think he does the no. I haven't seen him do the nose stuff, but I'm sure if I had one hanging out, he'd have done it. Then he does the little comb on the eyebrows and shaves them off. When you know, I get Makes those. Even. I get those Einstein ones sometimes that are all curled up and go out and so. You afraid of them cutting them off? Is that like all your brain? Yeah, like getting yeah. like yeah sucked out. Yeah, and he knows I have a little uh, calic here that kind of wedges it out, so he puts the little hair thin in there. And we affectionately call it the wedge. Yeah, and I don't, I don't have to say anything. I just talk to him about you know life and how he's doing and all that stuff. I haven't so. slept in twenty four years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I haven't slept in forty years <laughs> yeah. ever hey. since I had kids. Hello from Iowa. Hello from Idaho. I'm only, I am only 34. You cannot say 40 years. Okay, 34 years. <laughs> I was rounding up. All right. We got any, do we you. have any questions? No, mm -mm, never. Am I gonna make up stuff? Mm -hmm. Of course you have questions. There's, what's all those different colors? Are there more questions? You know what? How about you just don't worry about questions? Have we got more than two or three? Yes. Oh, okay. The colors are for me to know and you to not worry about. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's because people want show notes or they want to know what we kind of talk about. So I have to color coordinate them so I can remember what we talk about with having, without having to really listen to an hour of my voice. Because as much as I love listening to my voice, I kind of just Well, the show notes are the ones we've already answered then. Right. So they're All right. pre previous sessions, if you will. Speaking of which, YouTube is completely updated. Oh, thank you. Up to last week's session. So they're all... Includes last week. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So they're all up there with show notes. Um, We do have a podcast, finally. Wow. I submitted it to Apple this week, so we'll let you know if it gets approved by Apple. But it is on a few different places. I can post links for you guys if that's something... It's basically right now. It's just the the video it, with just the audio portion. It's just the audio from um, these Q and A's. I just pulled the audio out so you could just hear, you listen to it on the go or yeah, 
in your car. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know. She pushes me to do podcasts. I'm pushing you to do a lot of things. If I'm if we're doing podcasts, then I have to have you know some that are just you know me describing something I think we're talking about. Well, we so. can do those too. I'm also so, pushing you to do a book, and we've seen how well that's panned out. Yeah, that's about. 30-something percent, um, <laughs> 35 percent. I haven't picked it up for a year. So. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What else? So I guess I could ask people if we if I, um, if I we did a podcast, is that something anybody would be interested in? And um, if, I, uh, if I did a book that talked about how Family Tree worked and how family, how all that, how you did things in Family Tree, it's, then would that be something people would be interested in having? Um, I don't know. So it would be interesting to know if that'd be something useful. Like tips and tricks or uh, no, or like everything a, about, about what kind of, uh, what kind of relationships are there and how is the family formed based on these relationships and how do you fix families when they look weird and things like that. Is this going to be more like a dummies guy? Uh, well, I don't know. I know dummies sold really well, but I don't think people that are going to read it are dummies. So I don't know if I'm going to call it. I think it was a how to book. Okay. More of a how to. Um, Ruth, would the podcast consist of something different than these chats? So right now they're just these chats, but because she's just testing, right? Just now. testing to see if this is something a that we can get Apple to pick up. B, if you guys are interested in it. But if, um, if podcasts we, are something that you guys want to do in the future, we can set up. Well, what I'll do is I'll like talk about a particular subject. And, we can have and them, get deep in the subject and talk about it. We can so. sit down and I can have a set of questions. Maybe I ask you guys like say, hey, this week on the podcast that we're recording, we're talking about how to merge a record. What questions do you guys have about merging? And then whatever questions you guys have, I can sit down across from him and ask him those questions. He can answer them and the whole podcast can just be about that episode can just be about merging. We can also do some where maybe we get um, some of the engineers or the staff over at Family Search that you work with directly. If there's somebody that you're interested in meeting, we're getting to know that we could sit down and interview and kind of talk to. And we could ask some questions too. I'm sure they'd be fine with that. They were fine with us coming and doing lives there. So I won't, I don't see why they wouldn't have a problem with us coming there. But yeah, so I think it's more <clears throat> particular subject because I know we answer a lot of questions and you got to kind of scour around the different videos to find those. And Louisiana, hey, thanks for the hair. Thanks for the compliment <laughs> on the haircut. I, I need that. A date time now that you're now that you're all spruced up. Yeah, that's right. I have to take the <laughs> missus out except she's sick with a cold. So yeah. Southern California. I assume you guys are done burning up down there. I hope so for your sake. Yeah, no, it's St. bad. George, love podcasts. I do too. I love podcasts. I listen to them all the time. I hear that if I view here, okay, here will be our first question. This is Taylor. You never did tell us where you lived, where you were saying hi, because you said good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Taylor, so where I was are curious you? curious where you were. Let's see. Um, I, I hear that if I view my relationship to, if I view my relationship to someone, and the tree goes from me to my husband and his tree that he's closer in relation to that person. But how can I see how I'm related to them or am I related to them all? Well, the, the stage is yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the current that. relationship stuff tries to find the shortest path, but it does go up and it does go down. So I believe, um, yeah, we've talked about having an option to be able to say just how an I direct uh, directly related. So So uh you'll have to send me that one. Okay. Or I could start an email and just type it on my phone, that'd be best. If it's just this little it's not a question that you forward on. Oh, why you don't like my giant dad read me emails? No, it's fine. <laughs> With all you the can questions read it, it's you all want. tiny. I just copied and pasted the Excel spreadsheet. I'm sorry that you can't read it on your screen. Um, let's see. Maybe you uh, should make it old people's font size. Just saying. I can read it just fine. Let's see. Uh, ooh, people are liking the idea of the podcast. So we're Do doing the podcast. So what did I say? Oh, this is uh, the relationship to somebody. That direct goes. line versus through husband through spouse option. Yeah. 
Okay. You could argue that you're related because it's your uh, spouse's line. And oh, Taylor's from Australia. Ah, Australia. Okay. So I guess it is morning there. Yeah. Mommy. Yes, babes. For sure. Oh, it's okay. It'll What's dry. What's that? Nan Rai Mo. What's it's Nan Rai Mo? dry. You want me to take it off? Um, your choices are to leave it on and let it dry or to take it off. Take it off. Okay, come on. Okay, so sure what what's Nan Rimo? I, I don't know what that is. Your book of November with Nan Rimo. Hmm. Um, podcast is a plus, especially interview style. Uh, Leah Jones. Lately, when I am trying to edit death places and dates, the keyboard pops up and I can't see what I am typing or automatically fell. So you must be on a there's a Mario iPad or something like that. Okay. Some handheld device, and I don't know what to do for you there. All you can do, can you scroll up the screen oh. to get the field above the keyboard? Sometimes those things you can ask for a small keyboard. Uh, so let me know what kind of device you're on there, Leah. Uh, oh, Leah. I missed the question. I'm sorry. I was looking up what this Nan NaNoWriMo is. It's National Novel Writing Month. It's in November. Participants attempt to write 50,000 word oh, manuscripts yeah. between November 1st and 30th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Authors write pep talks to keep them motivated throughout the process. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good motivator. Either that or I just call you and scream at you every day. Yeah. <laughs> Linda okay. Carver, why are there so many books under the book section under search on Family Search that say you don't have permission? It seems like it's almost all of them all are all that way. The. The, well, by the way, we're revamping the way the book things work to make it uh, better and to allow us to show uh, portions and partial pages and things like that. But um, I will double check on this one, Linda, but I believe what it is is the way the books work is we can only show to a person – uh, we can only allow a person to open the same number of actual physical copies. Oh, apparently you're having a kid problem there. Okay. So we apparently can only uh, allow people to see that equals the number of actual physical books so we don't break copyright. So, for instance, if there's only one copy of that book in the library, then only one person can look at it at a time. Get the idea? we have three books in the library, then only three people can look at it at the same time. So my guess is that's what you're running into here. And it seems like almost all of them are that way because they're probably all one book and everybody's looking at them. So um, a book about what is what Keith says. Shouldn't all your tips and tricks already be on the Family Search website? Yeah, and sometimes it's hard to find them. So uh, that's part of the reason. Why I'm thinking about it. What is a legacy NFS source? I am seeing a lot, and I wonder how reliable a source it is. There are usually no details or explanations with it. All right, so um, in NFS is the previous system. For in case you don't, if in case you're not aware, it was the previous system before Family Tree, and that system uh, was uh, nobody could edit each other's stuff, so it wasn't open editable. And people would uh, create – some people would create sources. It wasn't that many. We didn't create that many sources. sources. I think in the, in the let's see, 7, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. In the five or six years that New Family Search um, was alive and working, we only had, I think, 10 million sources total. And, you know, Family Tree now, we're over a billion sources. So – and family tree's been out for now uh, six years. So, um, so what legacy source was is somebody typed in, and, and in NFS you didn't do attaching, you didn't get hints, you didn't get any of that kind of stuff. That's what made it hard for sources to get in. So most of the legacy sources came from uploaded JEDCOMs that people gave us back in the seventies and stuff like that. There are a few of those legacy NFS sources that are good and have value to them. 
but there's lots of them that don't because they were just JEDCOM notes that would, that people had put on those persons. So you just need to look at it and see if it's valuable. If there's no value in it, then just delete, detach the source and, and be on your way. But there, there's occasionally ones in there that are, that are good to keep around. And um, yeah, so that's where they come from. Yeah, thanks, June. Yeah, we found it in National Right. Uh, not a cell phone. Oh, Leah. Yeah, you're on a cell phone. Yeah. If you're on a cell phone using the website, I recommend that you go use the, the Family Trite Tree app, and then you won't have that problem with the keyboard getting in your way. Um, Janice likes the copy ID. What's the best way to get records found in Ancestry into sources in Family Search? We have lots of non-members come into our center that don't have Ancestry accounts. Um, well, I can't really tell you exactly how to do that, <laughs> being an employee of Family Search and all. But there's things you can do over in Ancestry to. Uh, you know, get a source someplace um, outside of Ancestry, and and that may be a direction you may want to go. Um, we continue to visit with Ancestry to see if there's ways that we can um, make all of their links, their URLs work, so that when people put them into Family Tree, we can go send them over to Ancestry and let them see the record. So we'll continue to work on them with that. Um, Oh yeah, you, yeah. Now, okay, Gary. Yeah, finally. Remember, we talked several times, several times ago, three or four times ago. We talked about people kept saying, "Well, I really don't like the sources in another tab and the and the details and the and because and it's slower and all this kind of stuff." Well, we released today the the sticky header, you know, the freezing header. Okay. And so now, if you go to Family Tree and you go to a person page and you go to like the sources tab. In there and you scroll it up the header goes from you know big to shrinks down to about three lines and then it's sticky stays on the page and then as a consequence of that the source goes behind the header and that allows you to open it up position it exactly where you like it and then you can tab the details click on the details tab and then when you click back to the source tab it's still exactly in the same spot so you can move the details tab to be in the right spot where you want it. And then you flip back and forth between the two, and it's like lightning fast, and you can see it and click, see it and click, and now you'll see that that particular, uh, the splitting it into two little screens is a lot faster. So you no longer have to do right mouse click, for instance, to open your uh, sources tab so you can see it in two windows. You can just do it right there in, in uh, Family Tree on the person page. And you said that launched today? Yeah, it launched today. That's so that's a cool thing. So, and and Go I, check I it out yeah, you check it out if you haven't, and and see if you like it better. And um, yeah, somebody mentioned the Ordnance Ready app. The Ready Ordnance Ready app is a great app. We have talked about it a couple times. Yeah, we got. I got uh, had several of my engineers and other product managers work for me come up to me the other day and said, "I think we made it too easy <laughs> because everybody will just be going like that." And um, and I said, "Yeah, I understand." And, you know, I do want to point out that one of our goals uh, that accompanies Ordinance Ready is we just can't be in the business of just handing out ordinances because uh, we need to have more people contribute to the tree. Otherwise, we start to run out of ordinances. And, you know, we don't want to go back to extraction and all that kind of stuff. So our job now that Ordinance Ready is out, it's, it's got another nine months of features coming on Ordinance Ready. You're gonna you're gonna love it, and because um, this is only like part one of probably four or five parts, and you're gonna love it. But part of our responsibility now is that those who take ordinance from ordinance ready, we need to learn more about them and offer them opportunities to come back to family tree and contribute to the tree. You know, add memories. Here's a hint about somebody. Let me teach you how to do a hint. Yeah. Those kinds of things to try to, now that they felt the joy of the ordinance is ready, you know, we expect ordinance ready to sort of be an individual thing and not for you to just click it and try to share stuff with people. It's sort of you. They should click it themselves. That way they get to the, know how to use it, and it gives us an opportunity to market to them to try to get them to come back to the family tree and add to it so that we always are growing in more opportunities. 
but thanks. Ordinance Ready is a great tool, and it's, it's just going to get better. Um, Record Seek also does that too. Record Seek's good for those records and tell you which records you're missing and stuff. It's really great too. All righty. I was going to say, I remember you talking to me about that Ordinance Ready, not the app in particular, but the idea of it probably like four years ago. And you were like, yeah. this is going to be the future. And yeah. I was like, that's never going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah, took it was, years yeah, for we it talk to about, we, yeah, we presented that in about four years. Uh, yeah, about it was like four, four or five ago. years ago. Yeah, three or four. Yeah, yeah, it's great. They finally get there. Me. We finally got to a point where the system can scale, and we were um, we're able to handle the traffic. And you don't hand that stuff out when you can't handle the traffic. And we're still not there. Ordinance ready isn't fast enough yet. We don't think, and Probably can't not. handle the full load of the church. So we'll keep working on it. So have we got any submitted questions there? We can start no. up on. Okay. Nobody likes you. Yeah, it has nothing to do with like. <laughs> I've explained it all. There's nothing left. No <laughs> questions left. Okay. First question. It comes from Bonnie. She says, searching images through the catalog at home on my computer is painstakingly slow. And most of the time, the images won't clear up enough to view them. This isn't an issue when I'm at a family history center. I have pretty decent speeds with internet. I have tried different computers. Is there something else that I can try? No, I can't think of anything else. The issue is probably the speed the bandwidth of your ISP internet. You know, if you have a 50 or a five or five megabit connection, it's going to be slow. If you're, mm -hmm. you know, in the 50 megabits and you're the only one, no, realize that at home, at home, every computer, if it's a wireless thing, every computer sort of attaches to the wireless and they're all, they all suck a little bit. And, uh, oftentimes, the more computers that are connected, even if the computers aren't doing anything, so they sort of crazy. consume part of that connection space, and that can cause you to slow down. So, I kill them all. yeah, it's like plug the thing, <laughs> plug, plug your computer directly into the modem, and turn off the wireless, and you'll probably find <laughs> it's a whole lot faster. But you know, I'm spoiled. We're spoiled here in, in uh, Provo because Provo became one of the uh, Google's uh, gigabit connection cities, and uh, I couldn't resist, and so I, I pay for a gigabit connection, and so for me, it's like lightning. Yeah, so I, I get normal 900 megabit downloads, nine to 950 megabit downloads, which is screaming. So let's be honest. But I've, I've before that I was on Comcast, and we paid for the higher, so we got 250 megabits, and that one was reasonable too. So. You could, if you, if you believe you have a fast enough connection, you could contact your ISP and complain and say that it's just not fast enough. I, I do recommend trying the wired instead of wireless because wired will always be faster than the wireless. Mm -hmm. True. And uh, so you ought to try plugging it in uh, and see if that improves that that connection so you can get better resolution. And because we we start we don't slow it, we don't download it all at once, right? We download it down a little bit at a time, right. and that's why it gets clearer and clearer in resolution. Um, it's like painting a picture it's or a printer where it's doing layers and layers on yeah. top of it, so it has to download a layer at a time. Right. And it's just slow bit. because it's just a slow connection. Yeah. We're trying, we're, we're, I know that they're working on some ways to speed up that, that uh, system that holds those images, so hopefully that'll help too. Okay. Okay. Vonda wants to know, on the person page, how do you get rid of the duplicate relationship cards that have... Cards? That's what she said. Relationship cards that have only one of the parents with one or more children. Oh, when yeah. When I try to add the PID of the missing this spouse, the parent beautiful, says, beautiful. the relationship already exists. Yes, hand me the thing. This is beautiful. One of oh, the things that I... You get to draw today. One of the things that I would talk about in the book, by the way, would be this okay. kind of thing, if we were to do that. If? How about, how about we say... When? Well, if nobody nobody wants it, then there's no reason to do it. Why wouldn't anybody want a book? Okay. If you want him to write a book while he's drawing this with beautiful illustration, give us like a thumbs up, a happy face, a heart, whatever. Give us some kind of reaction on the video. I don't know what you're drawing, but it looks weird. Uh -huh. I feel like I'm playing hopscotch. Oh, uh, it's beautiful. Okay.
Okay. <laughs> we'll start with the basics. There's only two kinds of relationships in family tree. One is a spousal relationship or a couple relationship, excuse me, and it has one husband and one wife. And then there is the parent-child relationship. The parent-child relationship has a father, a mother, and a child. Now, you know, you can represent all relationships in one of these two forms. Let's say that the child has is a single mom. So it just means that this father space here is empty, right? So now we have a single parent-child relationship. So when we construct the when we construct the family on the person place on the person page, page. when you see the family not the, not the place it looks like this i'm just going to assume that the the um so she says child one when i try to add the pit of a missing spouse or parent. yeah i know i understand so down here she has like mother and down here is child two okay so this is a. So you're trying to add a father. This is a father and a mother going to child one. And this one is a father and a mother going to child two. Okay. So when we paint the picture uh, at the family member gadget, you see something like this, right? There's a father and a mother and a child one. Then there's another place where you're missing one of the parents. So this is the father slot, and there's nothing in it. And that mother's the same as that mother. That's what you're telling us. Somebody up here is the same as somebody down here. Is this one down here? But this one has child two. So you're trying to figure out how to get child two up here to this section. Now, uh, this here could have two things. This this could be constructed by one of two things. It's either a parent-child relationship or it's a couple. So if there's a marriage, if it says marriage here in this little line here, talks about when they were married, that means there's also a husband-wife couple relationship as well. Okay. If it has, if it, if it says add couple relationship, then that means that doesn't exist. If it says a uh, date or no, or just nothing there, doesn't say add couple, then that means that does exist. But the only way children change their position is if they, uh, the only way that children appear here is through parent-child relationships. If there's not a parent-child relationship from C2 that, that had this mother, then C2 wouldn't show up here. This means that in this case, since there's no father showing here, it means that that part of the parent-child relationship is, I want to sit back because I'm blocking the light. Uh, uh, this part of the parent-child relationship is blank. Now, when you come up here and say, oh, just add the father here, then what happens is it croaks because this mother-father relationship already exists, the husband and wife. So it tries to, when you add a father here, it tries to make a couple relationship between those two and a parent relationship to this one. So the way you fix it is you click on the child. There's a little pencil here, I think. It looks like a square with a pencil in it or something. You click on the pencil. It opens up a screen that shows you this relationship. And then you add the PID of the missing person in this slot. As soon as you add the PID into this slot, and hit save, go back, then this will disappear, and the child, this will disappear, and it's going to go, boom, and child two will show up right there. And the reason why it shows up there is because both children, child one up here and child one two here, now have both the same father and the same mother in their parent-child relationship. Okay? Hope that makes sense. If not, ask a question again just on the live comment section, and I'll talk more about it. So that's how you. That's why it's the way it is. Uh, and you know, I think we could probably make it a little bit smarter, but that's the that's the way it is right now. 
Okay, I hope that answered your question. Oh, look, write a book, write a book, write a book. I like book. books, but books are out of date. You know what I was thinking? By the time it prints, and that is true. You know what I was thinking, though? You could write a, you could do um, like an ebook on like Amazon. Oh, and then have a, a updates. Uh huh. Because yeah, then you could, could easily work. update chapters or when you come out with a new thing, like a new person. Uh, let's page, see. You now, just Bar Pam said, and then you have a at, at a mother only or father only with child one or child two. Yeah, that's what exactly what we were discussing. Mm -hmm. That's right. So now you know how to fix this. Whoever it was that asked the question. Um, it was. Vonda. Vonda? Vonda. With Vonda. With v. Okay, Vonda, there you go. Yeah. Anyways, just thought. Mm -hmm. thought. Okay, the next question comes from Sheila. She wants to know, I tried to change the sex of a person and it would not change. It kept saying save failed. Eventually, I had to create another person, transfer all the data to the new person, and unlink the old wrong sex person from the family. Yeah, that's not the Correct that's not that. the way to do that. Because so, now any any ordinances or anything on that person are now off in space. Um, so if you have a person now, now I'll go back to my board again. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Woo! I'm going to tell you why same Ooh, sex nice. fails and how to fix it. We're going to change this in the future, but this is how it works now. You just get to use all sorts of beautiful um, drawings, art artistic abilities tonight. Yeah. Hopefully, all these people can read your handwriting. No, I'm not really writing much. Wow. Well. Isn't it interesting how that is opposite? There we go. Okay, so we're going back to this relationship stuff here. So here I have a husband and a wife. Isn't it interesting that the husband is a male? Well, it starts with an M, like mother. Isn't that interesting? And and a female is an F that starts like father. Isn't that weird? Yeah, Just notice that. So here's a husband and a wife. This one is expected to be, at least right now, we require the husband to be a male and the wife to be a female. Same with parents. We require the father to be a male and the mother to be a female. We don't care about the gender of the child in these relationships because um, there's no ceilings that are specific here to, to, uh, to gender, to, to sex. Now, the reason why you fail is because you're trying to change a person's sex that is in one of these two relationships. So the rule right now in Family Tree is if you have – actually, why don't we try standing it up a little bit more, and then I don't think it'll it'll do the shading, you know, the dark. No, just I think you can flip, flip that thing down a little bit more. My little stand thingy. There you go. There you go. That's good. Okay, that'll be better. I'm gonna lean forward and not taking out light. So, the uh, if you're trying to change one of these people or one of these people, they either got a husband wife uh, a relationship hooked on them, or they have a father father mother relationship hooked on them, and we don't allow you to change the sex if it's going to be opposite of what is implied in these positions. So if you're taking this position, the mom the mom position, and you're trying to change it to a male, then it will fail. You'll get a fail, say to fail. And that should have put a little yellow dialog box that says, you can't uh, make this sex change because it's in a relationship, an implied relationship. Implied meaning implied sex type, right? implied sex. So that person, so the way to change it now, if you and you should change it, you shouldn't go make a duplicate because uh, there's ordinances hooked to that person probably. Uh, you should remove them from the relationship, take them out of the – so if you it's both a, a wife and a mother, then you remove the mother from the relationship uh, or whatever, and then you change the sex, and then you put them back in. Mom? So um, that's how you handle that. Remove them from the relationship, and then change the sex. And then you're fine, and you can put them back in the relationship, 
as long as uh, and, and and you will have to still maintain the the non same sex couples and and parents. That's not coming until later. So we won't allow you to put two males together uh, as husband and wife or two two of the same sex first parents or anything. We're working on that. We've already talked about that. We're going to do that next. Year. We'll have that done by next year, getting early into next year, in the first half probably. But until then, this is the way it has to. This is the way it works. So if you get a change in sex fails, then that means you got somebody in a a spousal a couple relationship or somebody in a, as a parent of a child, and you just need to take them out of those relationships, change the sex, and then you're good to go. Okay. Now, the next thing that will happen, by the way, when you change the sex, if there's ordinances on there, the ordinance section will then turn to not available. And that's because if the ordinance section says not available, that means there are ordinances on that person that do not match the sex of the person. Okay. And so that means the ordinance is invalid because in the, in the, those ordinances are uh, sex-specific. Sex if you if you listen to the temple, you've been through the temple, then there's different blessings and different ordinances for each different sex. Go look in the bathroom or look upstairs. That's the only two places she's going to be. Okay? Or just she's not upstairs in the bathroom. It's okay. How about you just go watch your movie? I'm sure she'll be back in just a minute. I'm sure she will. Okay. All right, thank you. All Gram right. Grandma's missing. <laughs> Got a little separation anxiety. Yeah. Uh, Pat Murray Payne, there is one scenario family Siron does did not address, and I don't know your scenario. But if there's a father and mother and a bunch of kids, that, and then below that there's a mother only with just one of the kids above. Yeah. Okay, that'll work too. That's the other direction where you can just remove the mother, or, or yeah. Uh, father and mother and a bunch of kids then below that is a mother only with just one of the kids and the pids of the mothers are the same and the pids of the two children are the same you can edit this yeah that's right if the same pit appears in both and both the couple uh the mother and father are the same and the, ch the child and you have the same child below with just the mother you can just delete that parent child relationship with the child and then it'll all collapse again thank you very much pam for paying attention that i didn't quite cover that one bases. one case mm -hmm. all right the next question is from tamra says can family search track back to all members who have submitted their path genealogies if so we often have home damage and our copies are destroyed can you folks provide us with our digital jedcoms or otherwise microfilm numbers or batch numbers for original submissions um, uh, we have all, if you submitted a JEDCOM, we have all those JEDCOMs. Okay. From back in the beginning, way back in, you know, 1970s and then again in the 90s when, or 80s when we started the FamilySearch.org website. We have all those JEDCOMs and all those JEDCOMs are in genealogies today. So, I guess and if you, if it's uh, you now... Uh, if you need to get that JEDCOM back, remember it's going to be the age it was when it was submitted. So if you gave it to us five years ago, you probably made a lot of changes since then, and so we won't have all those changes. But okay. uh, but it should be associated with your account. But if it was long ago, meaning before family, before new family search, then uh, you probably have to contact support and tell them what your old uh, JEDCOM file name was, account name was. And then they can look it up and get it to you. Okay. So yeah, we can we can we preserve the JCOMs indefinitely. So all right. Okay, the next question comes from Bob. He says, I have one audio file uploaded into memories. I used to have a photo attached to it, and now it appears there's no way to associate the photo with the audio file. What happened? Yeah, there was never the ability to associate an audio with a video, uh, audio with a with a picture. Okay. Sorry, but we are going to do that. That's actually a new feature, and uh, and we we have it in the plans. It should I don't know I have a date on my head right now when it's going to happen. I don't think it's this year, but it'll be uh, not too distant, where you'll be able to have a picture and, and associate an audio file with a picture. 
Hmm. And that we think that'll be really nice because then the person can have a picture of some event and then somebody can describe what happened at that event and stuff like that. Or if you have like a recording of like your grandmother's voice or something. That's like right. That, you can show you a can... picture of her and then you have your grandma's t doing, talking about something. Right. Hmm, kind of cool. But you've never been able to do that before. Okay. So. All right. Another question from Bob. Will we ever be able to search our sources in our source box? I have over a thousand sources in my source box that aren't filed in surname folders um, that I have made, and it's really hard to find a specific source. Yeah, we don't have any plans for that right now. Uh, you can send that one to me, though. Okay. That might be, uh, I don't know, searches is pretty costly, but there might be something we can do there. Okay. Maybe have any over there? Understand the father thing. Oh, whoa. Um, ancestry institution option is available at the family center allows people to without an ancestry account to search there without having to go through the portal. Yes, that's correct. Pam was mentioning that. I guess somebody asked about ancestry. Somebody else asked me, uh, sent me an email too about ancestry insider on their computer. The only time it shows up, the only time ancestry in, uh, the ancestry institution, which is access to all of their records for free, is when you're uh, when you're in a church building or a, or a family history center. Church meaning like headquarters kind of stuff. Um, so some may notice it when they're there. It's all based on um, IP addresses that we have, you know, used in keys like that. So. Uh, so you may see Ancestry Institution on your computer when you're at a family history library and then when you, or a family history center and then when you leave you won't see that option there. So um, next one. When the family search app and click view relationship our, our relationship to that person is written at the top. Can you do the same on your computer version so we don't have to figure it out? That's been a common request. The problem is that we only show that text if you're like an English version of Family Tree app. Ooh. Because uh, guess what? Most of the world don't doesn't have any idea what removed means. And they, matter of fact, probably do theirs and matter of fact, a lot of people in the United States don't know what removed means. When you say third cousin twice removed, they go, huh? What's removed? So we've been working with our various linguists um, across the all of our different uh, places, all the countries that we go to and, and use our stuff. And when we think we have a proposal on how to ch put those words in so that it makes sense, you know, we may say something like, I'm thinking it's going to be something like uh, uh, two generations away. Because really only removed just means you're two generations different. Right. So you're either two generations. You're, these two people are looking how they're related, but you're a couple of generations away. Well, a generation would make more sense in every Removed. country because everybody understands what a generation is. That's right. So that's probably what we're going to go. We're still nailing down the wordage. The wordage. And when we do, then verbiage. we're going to – Yeah, yeah, verbiage. <laughs> so uh, when we nail it down, then it will change everywhere to be the same. But we had to figure out how to make it work for all the different countries and – Exactly. The one on the mobile was just an experiment, and there's plenty of people Apparently, that... Apparently, everybody liked yeah, it. Yeah, they did. You're not the only one that's asked for this. So. Okay. Um, I'm finding Jeff Collins that have been uploaded, created a lot of duplicates in my line. Is it a valid source? Uh, well, so Lori says, I'm finding Jeff Collins that have been uploaded and created lots of duplication in my line. Uh, is is it a valid source? I, mean, the, uh, I the, assume the Judcom is the Judcom considered a valid um, source. You know, that's uh, it, personally, I don't believe that the Judcom itself is a is a valid source. It may be a valid source if that Judcom has lots of rich sources. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I did a personal experiment when I went and looked at for John Tanner, and John Tanner is a somewhat. No, noted, noted ancestor of the Tanners. Yep. And I found like 44 duplicates in Jed Collins. Oh, and I and I looked at, oh no, it was 100 and something. It was 100 and something. And I went and looked at every one of them in the Jed Collins, and only two of them had sources on it. All the rest of them said ancestral file, which okay, or things like that. 
and uh, or personal resource file. So they were all just their sources was the same thing. It's like referring to the dictionary and saying that it's valid because it's in the dictionary and that you made up the word. But there's no place else it talks about the word except in the dictionary. And you say, see this word, see the same word in the dictionary. So it doesn't it doesn't help. It's not real sources. So okay. if a JEDCOM is well sourced and there are some out there that have, you know, really legitimate great sources on it, then it's certainly a valid source. Um, just to say you have to root through those to get to them. Okay. And there's lots of duplicates because, you know, if you go to descendants of Brigham Young and you and your church and the church says, upload your JEDCOMs, well, they all upload their JEDCOMs because they're faithful people. And it happens to be the same JEDCOM that was handed down for the last five generations. So now you got 10,000 copies of that line and they all, and then when they we, all submitted, then we brought them into family. Uh, it was into new family search, the old system. We brought them all together, tried to match them all up and merge them together, or combine them together. And, uh, and then those leaked over when we brought more family tree. Sometimes sense. people are not being careful when they're uploading their job comes into family tree. It's not a very great experience and they get tired of saying, yes, it's a match or no, it's not a match. And, Pretty soon they just say, no, it's not a match for everything. And then what happens is, uh, you know, it just creates duplicates, which is really painful. Mm. Understandable. It seems dark. Why Probably because, it, it, you know what, next time, the next slide we do, I'll bring my studio light and we can put it right here and okay. we won't have that light. Shining a little bit on us. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. Okay. Okay. Not sure. You want to scroll down, make sure we're not missing any over there before we start over here. So do you take the time to merge all the duplicates? That's the problem. It takes forever to sort them. Out. Yeah, you need to you need to merge all the duplicates. I mean, I certainly you don't want to spend your life doing that, but it's probably good practice to do a little cleanup now and then. Yeah, maybe dedicate like a day or something every mm -hmm. month where you're just like, okay, I'm gonna clean out for an hour of, and just sit down and do it. <laughs> yeah, nobody likes doing. Well, it. if you just spend a little bit of time, you say every day I'll spend half an hour merging duplicates, and then I'll. Eventually it'll be over. Or an hour or something. Yeah. All right. Well, there's lots of people doing it. I mean, there's there's probably um, I haven't looked lately, but I think the last time I looked, we were running about sixty thousand merges a day. Wow. So quite a bit. It's going to get cleaned up eventually because <laughs> we're not generating that many a day. So. Yeah. Okay, next question comes from Jen. It says, what is the recommendation on reserving ordinances? Should we only reserve those names that we can complete the entire set of ordinances for or reserve what we can do even if it isn't the complete set? Do we do the ordinances that we can and then release the names or share them with the temple? Just looking for best practices and recommendations. Well, um, so we're talking, so the question was around ordinances and reserving them and and I, uh, I believe that I would recommend that you only reserve the number of ordinances that you can do in a reasonable time. So pick whatever that is. Let's say, let's say you go every week, and, and so I would reserve enough for maybe a couple of months worth of stuff. If you go once a month, then, you know, you, maybe you're going to reserve enough for six months or something like that. Uh, I, it, it the reason why I tell you that the reason why I like that approach is because ordinances that you have your reservation list that means that relatives of yours aren't going to find ordinances in the tree and I really want everybody to get really excited about family history and one of the way they get it, one of the ways they get excited about it is finding a related ordinance that they can take to the temple so um, so I tend to lean and ask people to do reserve less and then uh, and allow others to be able to to take those uh, green temples out of the tree now that being said uh, we you know um, if you've heard before in the past in the past episodes we've talked a little bit about the changes that are going to happen mm -hmm. ordinances ready was the first of many changes mm -hmm. and in some of those and the remaining changes are things like uh, we're going to have a family reservation list so that you can uh, share reservations off your list onto the family reservation list. Then you invite the family to go to that same, all that one place so that you have 
five or ten people contributing to the family list and then others who need to work go there. Um, we're going to have ward and stake uh, areas where you share to the temple and then we'll be able to show you here's your here's shared with the temple ordinances that your ward members have done so that you can help your ward members so there's no more needs to go through the drawer and stuff and, and stake. We also going to do stake level. And, uh, and we're also going to allow people to take uh, reserved ordinances that have been shared to the temple and you'll be able to put them on your list and go get them done. Now there's caveats with all of those. Uh, we're, we are going to limit the number of reservations you can have eventually. Um, we're going to give you a time limit. You know, we have an expiration now. We've already presented it on the temple tab of two years for a reservation. But if you pull something that somebody else has reserved and, and then shared with the temple, you pull it from there, we're going to have you do, you're going to have less uh, time. So we're, we're going to do 90 days uh, for those kind of ordinances. And so it's all in an effort to provide maximum number of available ordinances to everybody so that everybody see there's plenty of ordinances. We're not going to run out. And, um, and so you don't need to hoard, hoard them all. You know, we got people that have lots of ordinances and uh, lots and lots and lots of ordinances and all they are just tied up so nobody else can do them yeah. and uh, we're going to try to free that up that's the whole intent over the next this year and it well into next year is to try to free those up so people can take them but i don't i don't want people to just have big lists i mean uh, it, i still want them to get done yeah. so and the more people that do it the more joy is found in, in, in more people and the more desire to do more family history, which means they'll research their own lines and they'll help the family research more. And then we're, we're saving more of God's children then because we're all, all going for new people. Right. We're all doing it. We're all working on it, not just one person in the family. Right. Okay. Do we have any more questions? Let's see. We're done? Yeah. No. no, I told you I only get a couple of questions. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Um, okay. Irene would like to know, I've heard it both ways. I've heard that if you are not absolutely certain a record hint belongs to your ancestor, it's a good idea to still attach it so that you can refer to it in the future to determine if it really is your ancestor. Um, now I was told to not attach the record hint for an ancestor if I'm not sure that it's really his because the search engine uses already attached records to help match new record hints. So it's more likely that you'll get another wrong one. If you've already attached one wrong one, what's your advice on attaching record hints that you're not yet certain pertaining to your ancestor? <laughs> well, yeah, we, we said that at the beginning. Uh, it's not quite that fragile, you know, meaning that if you, if you attach one that really not about that person, it doesn't like all of a sudden you get bad hints everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's not that sensitive. Uh, although we do we do review those that we think are not a match and or think that they are a match when the person has said not a match um, and we examine that and we may use that as a mechanism to improve the algorithms um, you know the the problem with attaching it when you're not sure is that um, somebody else who comes along may think you were sure and so they, they assume that that's a valid thing. Now, that being said, you certainly can attach a source and put some kind of note on it or put change the title a little bit that said, not really sure about this one, you know, kind of thing. And, uh, and then maybe the community will check it out for you a little better and decide if it is or isn't. And they'll either detach it or, or edit the title. You know, right. any, anybody can edit a source, right? Anybody can edit the title and things. And so... So it's, it's up to you, I think, uh, as long as you are signaling very clearly that you're not sure, sure that this source is really about this person, then I think it's okay to attach it. It doesn't hurt anything with the algorithms because it's attaching. We're not, we're not that sensitive. We're more sensitive the other direction if you say it's not a match because you're not interested in adding a duplicate. That's where uh, it'll be more sensitive. So I think it's however you want to work. Just make sure you're signaling very well so that others who come to the page, they can, they can see that 
I am not sure that this or this source is about this person, you know, help me or something as opposed to them thinking that it was a conscious decision to put it there. Cause it's perfect. I'm a hundred percent sure. Yeah. Makes sense. Genealogy is rarely a hundred percent sure thing anyway. So good to know. All right. The next question comes from David. He says, what's up with period or not period after initials in a name as in David M. Newland or David M. period Newland? Well, none of, none of that affects any of the stuff that's in family tree, but there are, uh, there's a school of thought and you have to realize that this is how people are interpreting this, at least in Western cultures. And the difference is, is if you don't have a period, then traditionally people will assume that that was his middle name was just M. M. I had a guy on my mission, not a companion, but he was in my mission. His name was Reed A. Later. And his middle name, and I said, well, what does A stand for? And he says, nothing. It's just the letter They just like the letter A, Reed, Reed A. Later. Read a later, and he has no middle name. It's just a middle letter. Initial. A middle letter. It's not even initial. It's just a letter. Okay. Okay. His middle name is A. And uh, and so in those cases, you don't want a period. If you put a period in, then that sort of signals to others that there's probably a. There's more. There's more, but besides just the just the A. So if his name is Reed Alfred or something, you would put Reed A period. Uh, some people just do whatever's on the source. So if the source says it's uh, read A then without a period, then put it like the source. If you find out later that he has middle name that's bigger, then change the A and add the real name in the middle there. Uh, or if you know that the middle name is more than that, but you don't know what it is, you put a period. So that's really the discussions that's been going on. I've seen some of that running around and get satisfaction and, po and uh, suggestions and postings. But... Uh, I, you know, I, I think the the intent that the community is trying to say is if you put a period on it, it implies that there's more to there's that a, middle name. Yeah. If there's not a period, then they assume that the middle name that was, was that it. letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes so, sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, from David, living sources to be or not to be. I received a notification that the sources could be added to them, and then it said it could not. Well, that's because you're looking at two different places, David, believe it or not. <laughs> you actually can add sources to living, okay. but you can't do it with the source linker tool. The source linker tool has to be updated to support attaching records to living persons. That hasn't happened yet. Okay. They're, they're going to be working on that soon. Uh, but you can manually attach a source, you know. We've forgotten, you know, a lot of people haven't learned how to create a source in your source box and then attach it to a person because the source linker is so nice, you know, that that uh, it was a great feature. It's a great tool. And so, but that's not the only way that you can attach a source. You can go uh, and add a source to your source box. You can go find a record, add a source to the source box, uh, and then you can take that out of your source box and attach it to a person. So you can do that with living. And that works just fine. And then when Source Linker gets uh, gets done with their update, then they uh, they'll be able to attach uh, sources that are matched. Now we don't have Living inside of our Hint engines because Living is it's a private thing. Right. But we're working on a way to be able to eventually show hints on Living persons if we think we found a record. But it'll be it'll be uh, on the fly and not in our systems. Uh, permanently, so there'll be a slight delays when we start showing those hints, but we'll eventually have those too. Okay, I think that's gonna be our See last. there, Christy Sue says, My Phil has a middle name D. Phil is which, father in law, which drove oh, father in law, which drove the army crazy. I bet because they're like, What's your middle name? Hey, what? Do me 50 push ups. What's that middle name? Hey, hey. give me another 10. <laughs> I'm sure you got really buff. Yeah. <laughs> Are you aware of the ancestry? Um, oh no, I was not, Gary. I didn't see. It. So he's saying that it's showing up on all computers, not just the ones at Family like History Center. Google blocks as a pop-up. Blocks it as a pop-up ad. ad. You then have to allow it to, to show. show at the Family History Center. It works, but at home, you only get this. 
Peter oh, yeah. Lau, at the Family um, History Center, it works, at, but at home, you get this as only for institution. Uh, 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 if you don't allow the AID the blocker, blocker it like never ones. works when you click on it again. So there is two ancestry links on that person page. I will try it after this live to see, to so I can understand that. Thank you, Gary, for clearing that up for me. You're saying that it's still showing up, but then of course, if you click it, it's going to fail. Uh, because you're not a family history center. So thank you. Yeah, that would be a bug in our new client and I'll have to person page and I'll have to pass it on to the team to have them uh, get that off the screen if you're not in a family history center. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Lee wants to know when will the dark background slash skin be back as a personal setting in the tree? I'm guessing being able to invert the colors so they can see. Yeah, it we had an inverse in the... Um, in the landscape view and uh, i haven't paid attention because i don't usually use the invert thing maybe it's easier on other people's eyeballs no it is some people like it that way uh, it's there you just have to go to options so i'm looking at the landscape view you go to options on the right and there's an invert color and you select it and it inverts the colors you deselect it and it goes back to the white. So it's there. I think it's only, I think it only has ever been on the landscape view. I don't think the portrait view has any options. Let me see. Yeah, it has, yeah, it, it has inverse colors as well on the, on the uh, portrait view. How about the fan chart? I don't think has any. Let me go see options there. Yeah, you can do it there too. Let me see if it works. Yeah, that works too. Look at all these things you're learning about this. Well, you know, I don't. I usually <laughs> stick to the old standard landscape. So, invert yeah, colors. Yeah. Sentencing. So, invert colors are on all of them. You just so need to, to click the on the option button on the top right of the screen there. Look at the. And select, and then it does it just, and then maybe it's because it's not remembering it. So you have to let us know. Maybe it doesn't remember. Okay, I think that's it for us tonight. Okay. You. All right. Thank you very um, much, everybody. Really I am going that. to. So we are off until November because he, Ron is presenting all of next week. <laughs> yeah, um, going to be a rough week. We're going. I'm going to post in Multiple the group. Multiple places. I'm actually going to make him stay here for just a few minutes after we get done. And if there are any of them that are open to the public, I'm going to post about them in the group. So if you guys are near the area and you want to come, you're invited to come. Okay. Um. But if not, the next time we'll see you is in November. Yep. Um, as always, the Google form is open 24-7, so feel free to drop your questions at any time, day or night. They're all, Whenever like, it, it comes. It Whenever it hits you. All the time. Whenever it hits you, just put it in before yeah. you forget. Bookmark it, whatever you need to do. It's always there. It always collects the answers, and we look through them quite often. Um, yeah, you have anything to add? No, thanks. And oh, oh, I'll say a special hi to to the people in Nigeria. Oh yes, we did get a we got a, a, a mail message from through Facebook from yep. a group in Nigeria that we're using the My Family, family Book booklet. and get, send us some nice shots of there in their, yeah. in their classroom doing that and getting taught. And great job, thank you very much for saying thanks. It's always nice, and I hope that the booklet has been great for you to to do your work there. Yeah. Very and, cool to see you guys. And I hope it. you have wonderful experiences and joy in finding your family because yeah. it's some of the greatest feelings when you find somebody. So, so have a good evening, everybody. Yeah. Take care. And we'll talk to you next time. We'll post when our next set of uh, lives are coming up. Yep. November. So yeah, so, November. Happy Halloween. Yeah. We'll see Enjoy you in November. It. All right. Bye-bye.